Hi, I'm Tony Grissom. I'm the Public Safety and Forensic Account Manager for Leica Geosystems, and I'm also proud to be a technical advisor to the Criminal Justice Division of Fox Valley Technical College in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, we're here today to do a demonstration of our latest 3D crime scene laser scanner, which is called the Scan Station C10. This rapid response tool can easily place jurors in a crime scene, and that, that can be a powerful tool when trying to overcome the CSI effect. This tool can change lives forever as well as enhancing public safety in a post-9-11 era. Fox Valley Technical College has a national reputation for its best practices in law enforcement and forensic training, and Leica Geosystems is excited to partner with such a leader in education. The Scan Station C10 brings to bear the latest set of eyes to help you prepare for service in a nation relying on cutting edge homeland security initiatives. So by now you've seen the crime scene that we have staged for this particular exercise. We have a mannequin set up with a wound. We have some evidence down on the ground. And I'm gonna start off by showing you a little bit about the concept of this technology, the Scan Station C10. In this mock crime scene video, you actually see an animation showing the Scan Station C10 and its ability to put out a pulse of iSafe laser light. This actually happens up to 50,000 times per second, and what it does is it sends out a, a pulse of laser light, which is then reflected back to the laser scanner millions of times, and the result is a vivid 3D immersive experience which allows you to digitize the crime scene in time. And importantly, you can go back much later and extract out any measurement that might be of interest to you. In addition, you can look at witness viewpoints, you can do shooting reconstruction, and we're gonna show you some of the results of the scanning that we did as soon as we finish doing the scan. So now we're, let's take a quick look at the scan station C10. Um, first of all, you'll notice that the instrument itself is set up on a tripod. For an outdoor scene or a larger area indoors, this is a perfectly good solution. However, homicides sometimes happen in tight places, like a bathroom, and we do have an, uh, a secondary mounting device if you would wish to use it, and this is the floor stand, which would allow you to mount the laser scanner right here so that you can pick up evidence that is down low. Maybe you have a victim that's under the table. This tool makes the system very versatile because one of the primary goals when you use the system is that you must have a direct line of sight between the evidence that you're attempting to locate within the scene and the laser scanner itself. So this allows you to get down low if you need to. But we're gonna work off of the tripod and the first thing that I'm gonna demonstrate is that on this unit it's completely self-contained. It operates off of standard Leica total station batteries, lithium ion batteries, which do not have a memory. You can keep them on the charger all day long and when you get the call out you can go to the scene, put in a battery. We actually have the ability to have two batteries in the system. Here's the second battery. You typically get three and a half hours or so out of two fully charged batteries. And once this is uh, inserted, I then can go ahead and power on the system by pressing this button. Now it should be ready to operate in about 90 seconds or so. An experienced user can get this system set up on a tripod and be ready to laser scan in about five minutes. While we're waiting for the system to boot up, I'm gonna talk about some of the features of this system. When it comes time to actually operate the system, I'm going to use a touch screen here and the stylus that comes with the system. This eliminates the need for having an external computer. However, you can operate the scanner with a computer if you choose to. We also support wireless functions. So if you want to put in a wireless uh, USB stick into this port right here, you can actually be outside, outside the crime scene and seeing the data stream in over your laptop computer. Most users are probably going to operate by logging data directly to the internal 80 gigabyte hard drive that's inside the laser scanner. Importantly, this device, in addition to being a laser scanner, which can capture three and a half million points in only less than two minutes, there's also a high resolution digital camera that is built in, which enables the user to take a panoramic high resolution photograph of the crime scene in addition to making all of the measurements. Now, this photography does not replace this, the uh, 
traditional crime scene photography that your crime scene unit probably does, but it will augment it and provide you the ability to go into the scene and look at it panoramically. Importantly, the scanner, while it's still booting up, it's uh, splash proof, meaning you can use it in the rain. It's dust proof. It has environmentally enclosed optics. Uh, it can be used in bright sunlight or in total darkness. Uh, it uh, has the ability to measure out to a maximum of about 900 feet, though typically four to 500 feet in two directions is, is more typical. And then the accuracy of the measurements out to about a range of 165 feet is about a quarter inch. So it's a very high accuracy piece of equipment. It's commercial off-the-shelf surveying technology that's used all over the world for surveying and engineering. It just happens to migrate over very well in order to support law enforcement activities. So at this point, the scanner is ready to operate, and I'm going to go ahead and set up to start doing some laser scanning. OK, we're going to go ahead and start the scanning process by first creating a project and then initiating the laser scan and photograph. So we're going to I'm going to start by showing you that the main menu consists of five icons. We're going to be only using three of them. The first one is the Manage icon. I'm going to go ahead and tap on Manage, and I get to the list of projects that currently exist inside of this scanner. Once again, this has an 80 gigabyte hard drive, and this icon up here represents how much of that 80 gigabytes has been used. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select New. These are called soft keys down below here. And a new project dialog comes up. For a police agency, this is where you might assign a case number and indicate who the crime scene investigator was who was capturing the data. I'm going to tap on the name field, and I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and put in my name, and then press the Enter key. Once that's been inserted into the name field, I just store. And it shows up in my list of projects, and I'm ready to continue. That's all there is to creating a brand new project in order to capture your laser scan data along with your panoramic photograph. Next, I'm going to go to the scan menu. The software is smart enough to know that it, I probably want to log data into the project that I just created, so I can go ahead and say continue. Here it's asking me if I want to measure the instrument height. And if you're the kind of a, uh, for example, a crash investigator, who works with total stations and wants to use a method that involves traversing and backsighting, this is where you would use this. However, most people who are in the crime scene investigation don't use that feature, so I'm just going to continue. And I'm brought to my scan parameter menu. This is kind of like a web page in that the field of view tab is now highlighted, the resolution tab is right next to it, and the image control is right next to that. What I'm going to do is first start with the field of view. This is where you tell the scanner, what is it that you want to scan? In my case, I want the field of view to target all. So I drop this pick list down, and I select target all. At that point, I'm ready to move over to resolution. And it's defaulting to medium resolution. This will be a scan that takes six or seven minutes and will capture 11 million points. I'm going to go ahead and knock it down to low resolution, which will take a less than two minutes and capture three and a half million points. For an interior scene, low resolution will, will be just fine. And finally, I'm going to go to image control, where I'm going to tell the camera to go ahead and automatically detect the appropriate exposure for the, for the photography that will be taken. After I've set those parameters, I'm ready to go ahead and press scan plus image. And the scanner goes into its calibration state. It says, scanner is calibrating. Please wait. This is a really a positive thing, because the scanner will not collect data unless it's determined that it's in proper operation. This is especially important for laboratories that are attempting to be ASCLAD accredited or, or comply with ISO 17025, um, much like a breath alcohol, breath alcohol content uh, instrument. You want to make sure that your instrument is properly calibrated. And at this point, the laser is starting to laser scan. It says it's going to take about 1 minute and 43 seconds. You get a progress bar. And at this point, I'm going to move over to the crime scene. We're going to kill the lights. We've got to do this fast. 
It's so fast I have to move over here. And you can actually see the laser sweeping over the scene. It actually finished sweeping over the scene before I could get over there. At this point, your mission, let's bring the lights up, please. Your mission is to keep out of the way of the scanner. So if you have emergency personnel who are doing other things at the crime scene, you have to alert them to the fact that scanning is taking place. It'll take a few minutes along with the photography. And as long as you stay off to the side of the scanner, the laser is coming out two directions. So it, it makes a 180 degree pass. And when it's finished, it'll then go into photography mode. What you'll be doing is freezing that crime scene in time and you'll be enabling investigators to come back at any point in the future in order to be able to make measurements. Uh, and this is sort of the, the most important part about its use at a crime scene. When investigators go to a crime scene, they always locate the obvious things like the body, the weapon, the shell casings. But at some point, even experienced investigators, and I'm trying to stay out of the way of the scanner, Experienced investigators will say, we're done. It's time to go home. We think that we have enough evidence collected. We have enough measurements made. It's time to go home, release the crime scene. That's a difficult judgment to make because it's a very subjective decision. And it may not be until a month or a year later that a witness comes forward and all of a sudden a particular measurement from something that nobody measured with a pocket tape or a roll of tape was made at the scene. Laser scanning can allow you to go ahead and make any measurement that you want as soon as the scanning is complete, which is going to be our next little uh, showcase. We're going to show you some of the data collected at this crime scene, and we're going to do that next, so here we go. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and take a look at the data. The one step that I didn't show was taking the data off of the scan station C10 using a memory stick and loading it onto the personal computer I'm now using. The first thing that we're going to look at is what's called a true space. In the upper left hand corner you can see that I'm in true space mode and what I'm doing is I'm looking at the panoramic digital photography that is captured by the laser scanner. This is a very valuable piece of the overall record of the crime scene and as I, I can pan around the room and show you any part of the room, the chairs, I can look up, show you the ceiling. Once again this is a 360 degree scanner we're going to go ahead and, of course, focus on our mock crime scene. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the point cloud, which is behind the photograph. And you can see that the image changes just a little bit as the almost 4 million points populate the screen. And I'm ready now to take some measurements. So what I'm going to show you now is probably the single most important, powerful part of this technology. It's the ability to go into the virtual crime scene as it was frozen in time at the time of the investigation when it was a controlled crime scene and to extract out any dimension that may be of interest. I've gone ahead and I've picked a point on the center of the mannequin's forehead and I'm going to go ahead and pick a point on the weapon off to the side. Once I've picked those two points, I press the D key and the dimension is shown. In this case, it's 7.32 feet. I have a bullet impact up here on the ceiling, or the wall, I should say. If I pick on that, I can press the D key and get you that dimension as well. If I want to make a dimension down to the shell casing on the floor over here, I can do a third dimension. I can extract out any dimension I want at any time in the future. But here's the most powerful part of it, is if it's determined at some point in the future that the dimension from this roll of tar paper leaning over here in the corner to let's say the victim's marijuana pipe located in the foreground here, if that turns, to be, turns out to be an important dimension in order to explore an investigative theory, I can go back at any time that I wish and pick a point on that roll of tar paper over to the marijuana pipe on the floor and I can extract out that dimension as well, 20.64 feet. S laser scanning from Leica can protect you from missing a measurement that later on becomes absolutely critical to a prosecution. If this dimension and this image is proves to be useful to you, you can easily capture a snapshot of it using our snapshot tool. This allows you to write a JPEG image, which I'll call Leica 1, and I'll write it in JPEG format up to my desktop. I can quickly create that image, load it up onto my desktop, and then I can show it to you right here. Here's the 
file that I just created. This can be emailed to somebody. It's about 100 kilobytes. You can drop it into a PowerPoint. A prosecutor could use it in court. So real-time measurements, looking at the photograph, these are some of the most powerful tools that you can look at. And once again, this was available to, to be viewed and analyzed within 45 minutes of me walking into this room and being shown the mock crime scene. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is something called TrueView. TrueView is a free viewing software that runs inside of Internet Explorer. And what it will allow people who are non-technical to do is to be able to look at the crime scene inside of Internet Explorer. So the first thing that I'll point out is up here is I'm running Internet Explorer, which is a free piece of software for browsing the Internet. We use it to be able to browse the crime scene. When I double click on this right here, I'm going to go ahead and hide the uh, Internet Explorer part. I'm going to show you the free Leica TrueView plugin which people can use to navigate. All I'm doing is holding down my mouse button. I'm zooming over to where the, uh, the victim is. You'll notice there's some, some text on the screen next to the various pieces of evidence. That's because this is called hot spots, or hot links, I should say. This enables an investigator to quickly put together a true, true view which correlates the high resolution crime scene photography taken by the crime scene unit with the laser scan data. For example, over here I have the, the weapon used in the crime. If I double click on this hot link here, I can pull up the five, you know, 10 megabyte, whatever resolution you use for your crime scene photography picture and enable a prosecutor or another investigator to show exactly what that evidence looks like in a part of the crime scene. It's a very powerful tool. There's a soda can right here. It's called TrueView. So for this short demonstration, this is pretty much what uh, I was hoping to be able to demonstrate to give you a rough idea about how the scanner operates, how easy it is to use. And we hope you'll take a further look at some of the courses available from Fox Valley Technical College, as well as the forensic website available from Leica Geosystems.